John chapter 15 and verse number 14 and 15. And it reads like this. Jesus speaking, he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. He said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I've learned from my father I've made known to you. Verse 16, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing so that your fruit will remain and be lasting, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give it to you. Father, the anointing is here already. We have worshipped God. We we are positioned. The atmosphere is here. We pray for your word that it would be able to get into our hearts, Lord God. We don't just need a word. We need a revelation, Lord God. We need impartation within our spirits, Lord, to be able, God, to grab something. Grab your word. Let it live inside of our hearts today. Let our hearts be fertile soil for your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Right before you're seated, can you ask somebody, are you a servant or are you a friend? You may be seated. Here in John chapter 15, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, the men that would carry his mission and purpose after he was gone. In John 15, he was imparting to his leaders from what platform he wanted to lead them from. He was imparting to the men that would carry his mission, the men that were closest to him, he was imparting to them from what platform he wanted to lead them from and from what relationship he wanted to direct them from. There was something here in these two verses that he wanted to get into their mindset and he wanted to get in their hearts. But I believe to really understand the magnitude of what he wanted them to get, we have to understand a couple of words this morning. The first word is the word transcendence, the transcendence of God, meaning that God exists apart from and is not subject to the physical limitations of natural. He is above and beyond, surpassing and excelling. He is greatly superior to you and I. We don't even measure up to God. Somebody say amen. There are words that are attached to that word transcendence. Words like omnipresent means that God is all-powerful. God's power is limitless. It's not subject to physical. Somebody better say amen. God is not subject to physical limitations. That God has power over wind, water, gravity, nature, and physics. There is nothing too big for God. Somebody better say amen. There's a song that I, I wrote, and you sing it here a lot. I want, I wrote it, I wanted to get that word omnipresent in it. Amen. There's not a lot of songs with omnipresent in it, but I wanted to make sure that when we invoke the presence of God, we're not, this is not just an atmosphere of church. We are invoking the omnipresent God that we serve. Words that are attached to that word transcendence is omniscient. Means God is all knowing, that God is all knowing in the sense that He is aware of the past, present, and future. That God is um, omni, uh, omnipresent and omniscient, and God is also sovereign. He is a sovereign God. Somebody say amen. A sovereign God. What does sovereign mean? It means there is absolutely nothing that happens in this world that is outside of God's influence and authority. He is absolute and he is unrestricted and he has no limitations. He can do all things, accomplish. Somebody better say amen. Nothing is too difficult for him. He orchestrates and demonstrates everything that is going to happen. He is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. The second word is the word imminence. And the The word imminence means, listen carefully, that even though God is greatly superior to us, it means that you and I, it's possible for you and I to have a relationship with God. This omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, sovereign God 
who we don't even belong in the same atmosphere with us, has given us the privilege of having a relationship with him. And to take it a step further, imminence means, listen, that we have the privilege of being friends with God. Somebody say amen. That with all my faults and all my weaknesses and all my history, I have the privilege of being friends with the creator of the universe. Somebody say, we need to give the Lord a radical clap offering this morning. Job wrote this. He said, oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. David was a call, was called a man's heart, was called a man whose heart, heart beat to God's. What a definition of a friend. Moses, the Lord would speak to Moses as one who would speak to a friend. But Jesus defined it here even further in John chapter 15. When he wrote this in John 15, that there is a difference between a servant and a friend. The question this morning is, is are you a servant or are you a friend? Now, sometimes the ministry, especially the ministry that we're in, it produces busy people. God bless four of you this morning. We have people who love to serve. Who love to serve. And sometimes even serve in multiple areas. We did a survey in our church of everybody that was involved in ministry. We found one guy who was in five ministries. I asked him, are you Jesus? Amen. I said, what are you doing? And we found people in multiple ministries. Our vision produces a lot of people. But here's the question. Does our ministry produce servants or does our ministry produce friends? The story of Martha and Mary. We look at that story that Mary was, Martha was busy serving preparing because Jesus was in the house and that Martha was distracted. Luke 10 says by all the preparations, she became upset when Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and she actually told Jesus to tell Mary to help her. And Jesus told her, calma there. <laughs> and she, he said, Mary's chosen. What's better? I want to know, is our ministry producing Martha's or is our ministry producing Mary's? You see, some will use a message like this as an excuse not to serve. But it's not the serving that's not healthy. It is the serving from the mindset of a servant and not the mindset of a friend. Because if all we do is serve from the platform of a servant, we produce people who burn out. We produce people who never mature in their relationship to God, who serve in their natural abilities and not function under the power of the Holy Spirit. We produce people who have conflict with those who think they're, that there are people that are not serving and they're the only ones that are working hard. I know you don't have that here, but in Denver, man, we have that all over. And ultimately, our ministry will have limitations, and we will not be able to keep pace with the Holy Spirit because we are serving from the platform of a servanthood. Are you a servant or a friend? Now, when you think about that, Jesus even say, said it, the most obvious difference between a servant and a friend is time spent with the master. The servant only spends time with the master when he is serving. There is no quality time spent with the master. And I know people that the only time they get holy, the only time they have any kind of contact with God is when they're in church serving. But I'm here to tell you, this is a year not just for servants. This is a year when God makes some friends in the house of God. The only time spent with the master is when they're serving. That's why Jesus looked at him and says, man, I'm not going to call you servants. I'm going to call you friends because servants don't know the master's business. So are you a leader or are you a, are you a servant or are you a friend? As a leader, I've been asking myself from the beginning of the year, the Lord's been putting it in my heart and the heart for my church is where am I serving from? What platform? Where am I leading from? Where am I living from? 
And I've come to the conclusion that people who struggle in many areas of their life, they struggle in these areas when they live from, serve from, lead from the perspective of a servant than from a perspective from time spent that their friend produces. This year has to be different. I told my church, this year has to be different. Our focus cannot just be on strategy. It has to be on power. I'm of the believer that anymore we can do great events. But what changes the heart of a sinner is the presence of God. It is the power of God walking into this place and sensing the power of God. We must lead from, live from, and serve from the power that we get from our friend. We must lead from the platform of our friendship with Jesus to keep pace with what the Holy Spirit is doing in this hour. Now, here in John chapter 15, Jesus speaking to his disciples, it was clear that he had a desire not just to lead them, but lead them through his friendship to direct them to his friendship, lead them as a friend. Peter learned this, uh, that Jesus did, when Jesus did the miracle of the fish, when Jesus asked him to take his boat out into the deep, Peter responded, say, master, and that word master means, in in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it means boss. Peter's relationship with Jesus came from more of a perspective of a boss or a taskmaster. But after the miracle, Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was and was overwhelmed, not just from the catch of fish, but who Jesus was. And he uses the word master again, but it's a different. It means all powerful, omnipotent God. And Peter got down on his knees and told Jesus he wasn't worthy of the presence because of who he was. Jesus spoke into his life as a friend and told him from now on, you're not just going to catch fish. You're going to catch him in. Transcendence and imminence in action. Are you a servant or are you a friend? Is he your boss or is he your friend? One of the things that I've been telling the Lord is, Holy Spirit, I want to get out of the way this year. Move me out of the way. Move, move us out. If you want to interrupt our agenda, that's all right. Hallelujah. I know that many of our churches, mine included, have strict agendas. We know exactly what's going to happen next. But I believe this is the year that the Holy Spirit interrupts what we are doing and begins to pour out his spirit upon us. Come on. Is there hungry people in the house? So Jesus was imparting these things, and he said, I I'm not going to call you servants. I'm going to call you friends. Then he goes on to give four dynamics of friendship with Jesus. And that's what I want to leave you this morning. Four dynamics of friendship with Jesus. Verse 15, it says, Jesus said, For everything I've learned from my Father, I've made known to you. What Jesus does to his friends is he imparts to his friends. He gives them Number one, the power to hear. A fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit. Impartation defined as the act of creating, adding something new to be used. Every morning when we meet with our friend, there is a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. You don't always need a word. You you need a time spent with your friend to impart into your life. Somebody say amen. The power to hear. Jesus said, for everything I have learned from the Father, I have made known to you. We're always looking for something new. But when he's your friend, he begins to impart to your life and gives you the power to hear a word from him. Come on, somebody say amen. I have, I have, listen, man, I love, I have some favorite preachers. And Pastor Al is one of my favorite preachers, along with Pastor Sonny. But oh, when the Holy Spirit begins to speak into my life and give me the power to hear him on a daily basis. Are you getting this? The Holy Spirit gives us fresh impartation, impartation to keep pace with what he's doing. The dynamic is impartation, and the result is the power to hear. Are you a servant or are you a friend? Secondly, 
Jesus told his disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you. The second thing is the power to know. He validates his friends. The power to know. We live in a generation of comparison where we compare our lives to the people on social media for validation. There are so many great things about social media. Powerful to be able to spread the gospel. But some of the bad things about social media is that you get your validation from how many likes that you have. Come on, somebody say amen. Sometimes when I watch, when I watch, uh, I look at social media, I get all discouraged and disgusted because I feel like my life is lagging behind. Come on, amen. Everybody on social media looks like they have marriages made in heaven. But I tell you something about Pastor Tom. I just don't get on social media and say what great wife I have. I tell her that every day. Amen. If you're just telling you all the people that you're friends with, you need to tell your wife. Amen. There's so many people that are getting their self-worth from other things. When Jesus validates our life, he tells them this. Listen to me. I don't care. He, he probably could have told some of us. I don't care the hang of you, God, and the faults and the weaknesses. I chose you. You didn't choose me. Come on, somebody say amen. That's good to know. When you're feeling depressed and you're feeling like you're not measuring up, to know that Jesus validates our life. A friend gives the power to hear, and a friend gives a power to know. Impartation and validation. The third thing Jesus told them, he said, I have appointed you and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain and be lasting. Number three, Jesus inspires his friends the power to feel. There are times when I'm discouraged, but Jesus is my inspiration to feel better. Oh, he is the lifter of my soul. It's been a long year for us, our family, a uh, long, long year. And we went through things that we never went through uh, in our lives. One of those is, of course, I had cancer. And cancer just affects the whole family because there's a, a certain uncertain feeling of, of I'm going to be around. But I tell them, you know, don't, I tell my family and I tell my church, don't, and my friends, don't, don't just say good things about me while I'm gone. Say good things about me right now. Amen. <laughs> um, bring me flowers today, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. In lieu of flowers, I'll take money. Amen. Then I, in the middle, of the, 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 during the cancer, I got real sick. Uh, I had an infection, and they, they couldn't find it. These doctors, they get paid millions of dollars and have... And they held this knowledge. They couldn't find my, my infection. And I was this close to becoming septic and, and getting, uh, you know, get, getting all that in my blood. I saw Pastor Sunday during that time, and he looked at me and said, you look dead. Amen. I said, thank you, Pastor, for the word of encouragement. <laughs> so you look dead. Amen. <laughs> during this time, I had surgery, and I had to recover. I was out six weeks in my church. My dad died right in the middle of it. My father, who was 93 years old, who was my hero, who modeled to me what it was to serve God. He passed away. Not only that, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, during that time, that whole year, we launched out not just one church, but launched out two churches. And I sent all my top leaders out all over. And I, I, I have to rebuild. And then I was out. And during this time, the, the gentleman that we, the young man that we sent out, he ended up dying. He was there for like eight months, a lot of potential, and then he ended up dying. That's how Pastor Vic uh, and Nikki ended up in Aurora, which I believe they're going to do great things for God. <laughs> because they have great roots. Amen. During this time, you know, I, I would, I would, I, I couldn't sleep. And so I would get up, and the thing that I would say again and again and again and again is, Lord, I'm, I'm holding on to you. And God said, no, you're not. He said, I'm holding on to you. Amen. 
See, we think we're the ones that are holding on, but sometimes God's holding on to us. Somebody say amen. And there was a song that got me through. Oh, my God. C.C. Winans. His strength is perfect. I would listen to it again and again and again and again. My wife says, aren't you sick of that song? No, I'm, I got to hear it again. I'd get up in the middle of the night, put on Google, and the, it, it blasted. You know, It went something like this. His strength is perfect when my strength is gone. He'll carry me when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. You know where I got my inspiration from? I didn't get it from hearing somebody else. I got it from God right there. This is what God does to his friends. He gets his friends and say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. I got you. 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 That's where we get our inspiration from. I'm telling you, we are looking in all the wrong places for what we need in our daily life. We look for impartation, for, and that's not wrong. We look for validation in other things. We look for inspiration from other things. And the reason why is because he's not your friend. You know, in, in this, in the business that we've chosen, you got a lot of people you lead. And you got some that lead you. But there's very few that are at this level right here. And I comp that with Pastor Rock because we can tell each other anything. We can complain <laughs> to each other. We can complain about our churches. <laughs> complain about you. I'm not going to mention no names, but for a hundred bucks, I will tell you. <laughs> one of my lowest, one of, one of my lowest days, I was feeling discouraged. We got a package from FedEx, and inside that package was some slippers and a pillow from my friend, Pastor Alan and Georgina, and you know, great, great presents. But it was the encouragement from a friend. Amen. See, I want to tell you something. You're serving without him being a friend. You're headed for a crash. And you are ineffective because you are working and serving in your natural capacities. Where he wants to anoint you. God don't want us just to sing a song. If you're a worshiper, he wants us to sing an anointed song. And I'm here to tell you, there's an anointing on this worship team right here, man. You can sense the power of God. The last thing was transformation. Not only was there impartation and validation and inspiration, not only was it the power to hear and the power to know and the power to feel, but Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And let me tell you something. We've taken that out of context. That is a declaration for friends. Jesus gives the authority to his friends and gives them the power to change, transformation. He even says, you can even tell the people, you're my representative. You're my representative. The power to change. We are in a mission there in Victor Arch, Denver, that we've called this year the year of completeness because there's certain things that are missing within our life. We're still serving God. We're still worshiping God. But there's some of our family members that need to get saved. Amen. Some of our sons and some of our daughters are still out there. But this year, we're going to be friends with Jesus. And he's going to give us uh, the authority to look at those things and tell the devil, get your hands uh, off my children. Is he a servant or is he your friend? He looked at the disciples and he recognized that he didn't want to lead as a 
keyboard player comes. He didn't want to lead from the platform of just leading and directing. But he wanted to lead from the platform of friendship. Sometimes that's why some of us get burned out. Because we're operating on our own strength, own capacity. We haven't been with our friend. You know, you ask, somebody asked me, Pastor, would you ever not want to go through cancer? Well, I, I, don't, I don't really say I would like to go through that again. But I did know that I came out of this with a strong, strong, strong relationship with my friend Jesus and the Holy Spirit in my life. That's what's going to get us through. It's not going to get any easier. But God has given us the power to excel. And I pray this morning that you're just not busy. And that you operate from the platform of just serving. Because the atmosphere that you bring in here has to be from spending time with your friend all week long. He is my friend. And he's a loyal friend. Let me say it again. He is a loyal friend. He doesn't give up on us. He sees what we do and the mistakes that we make and the things that we say. And yet he still chooses to be our friend. There's a song that we used to sing a long time ago. It was my favorite. It said, I miss my time with you. Those moments together. And I wonder every time you get up in the morning and see sitting there waiting for you right after you get your coffee because somebody know we need to get our coffee. Amen. My wife is a coffee barista. Huh? But he's waiting there to be a friend. Come on, let's stand. Amen. Lord, touch our lives. Lord, touch our lives. This year is not a year of strategy. It's a year of power, God. It's a power within our lives. I want you to lift your hands, especially if you're a, it's committed. We're not telling you not to be committed. We're telling you what platform are you serving from is the platform of friendship. Let, allowing the Holy Spirit to pour in to your life as Marcus sings this morning. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friend, this morning. Thank you, friend, this morning. Come on, open your mouth.